All right, for the last and final part of this assignment, we are going to have a little fun with an advanced technique called layer blending, okay? So this is a little advanced, so if you get a little lost, don't worry, you can ask me in class if you have more detailed questions, okay? So what we're going to do now is uh, I really like the way the color is all kind of blended in this image that we're manipulating or that we're copying. So I'm going to try to mimic that with my layers, okay? So we're going to create another vector layer. So let's go ahead and see how I have, I have gray in the background, right? Let's get rid of my reference so you can see. So I have gray in the background, and then I have these shapes on top of it in this folder, right? Well, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a transparent or a blended layer on top of all of this, and it's going to manipulate the coloring of everything, okay? So I will just hold the Alt key, and I will duplicate my bottom layer and bring it all the way up to the top. Now, it's covering everything up. That's why you can't, that's why you can't see anything underneath it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn that down a little bit in opacity and I'm going to change the color of it and we're going to make it that kind of actually you know let's go for orange then maybe we'll go back more towards the red later on we're going to go for orange for now and I'm going to turn the opacity up a little bit more and then we're going to play around with blending okay so right now the blend is on normal but if I hit this drop down I gotta make sure I'm selected that top layer and hit this drop down. And I can get multiply, color burn, darken, overlay, all these different ones, okay? And they all do, do something different. But I'm gonna so I'm just gonna explain a few of them, but the ones that I usually use is I'll sometimes I'll exper I'll experiment with overlay to see what that does. And as you can see what it does is it puts an orange tint on everything. Sometime, but old overlay is quite complicated. I don't even know how to explain what overlay does, but it's always good to experiment, see if it makes things look better. Lighten is kind of obvious, it lightens everything. Darken, also obvious, kind of darkens everything. Uh, multiply, I'm not going to explain multiply in this one. I mean, when we do some artwork, when we do some actually drawing and painting, I'll explain multiply, okay? And screen is the opposite of multiply. Uh, so we're not going to get into that right now. But basically, multiply lets all the dark show. Screen lets all the lights show. Screens out the darks. Multiply the blacks. Okay. Uh, another important one. Let's do saturation. Or no, maybe color. I think color is what I'm looking for. So what color does is basically it says the color of this layer is orange. So everything else is only going to come through in shades of orange. Okay you can see what effect that's having by me changing this to pink. Everything becomes shades of pink. right? And of course, so we'll go with red or pink. And then if I turn down the opacity, right, it will let a little bit of the other shades come through. See that? So let's go to 50%. And now that it's red, let's see what it, what it does with overlay. Okay. Just for a little bit more fun, let's. T oh, and as you can see, it's having not much effect on these strong colors. So let's go back to color. Yeah, I like that. Another good thing that this does is artistically, what it does is it harmonizes your colors because they all become a little bit closer to each other on the color chart. Whereas before you had extreme yellow and extreme pink, now you have a, a yellow and a pink that are much closer to each other. Okay, so that harmonizes our entire artwork. But let's bring that art, let's bring that reference on top and let's make it really small. Actually, you know what I'll do? I'll make a duplicate of it, like a small version of it. So I'll alt drag it up. Huh, that doesn't seem to be working. Oh, I gotta hit enter key. So instead of reference copy, we'll call it reference small. Small reference. And we'll hit control T. And hold down the shift key so it keeps the proportions. And this will be our reference artwork. So we're just going to keep an eye on this. And we'll keep it at the top left. What I can also do, duplicate this yet again. And then control T. Oh, can't transform. Uh, instead what we'll do is we'll draw a big square, okay? Grab a square tool. And we're going to make the color of this pretty dark red. Or maybe, we've already got dark gray, so let's do a light gray this time. And just like this, we'll draw a floor plane. 
See that? So it goes through that middle square there. Okay. And then, oh, let me turn the opacity back up on the squares. Very good. And now what I'm going to do is, do you see how there's a shadow on this square? So what I want is I want a dark blend layer on this, only on this folder of images, right? So I've got this folder. This is side one, the first side. Okay, I could call it left side if I wanted. And now what I'm going to do is if I drop down, I have one big square for that entire thing, right? And do you see that shape there? If I were to grab this, you could see that big square. What I'm going to do is this is a vector and then this is the vector shape. Right, so this vector shape is masking this big block of white. So that big block of white only so shows up inside of this shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new layer up here. So in the very top layer, new fill layer, solid color. We're going to make it black because we want it to be a shadow. We're going to turn on the opacity because we don't want a solid black. We just want a little bit of a dark tint. So I'll make that 15%. But I only want it to show up on that square, right? So all I need to do is make sure that this square, just like this square, is encapsulating that white, I want this square to also encapsulate that black. So I'm going to make sure that I select only that right square, and I'm going to hit the Alt key. So hold down the Alt key, click and drag that shape to black. And now if I turn up the opacity, you can see that it is actually masking where that white is. So I can give it a strong shadow or as light a shadow as I want. As I want. Pretty nifty, eh? And I could do the same thing for the other sides if I wanted. For instance, I could put a white one on the top. So let's do that real quick. This is pretty easy. So I go to top side. Alt drag that white layer. And for this instance, I just need to turn the opacity down. So it's kind of like bleaching the top layer. See that? And just to get really fancy, what we're going to do lastly is we're going to manipulate, we're going to apply a, a gradual fade across that one, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a mask layer, or I'm sorry, a, mani a mask manipulation. So just create a mask. So you see this is the mask, this is the vector layer, the shape layer, the, the vector mask, and then this is my pixel mask. And then I'm going to grab my paint bucket, turn that into a gradient tool, Make sure I have a black and white gradient. And I'm just going to click and drag across that. Now, see that right there? <coughs> I think if I hold down the shift key, it'll. Or is it the alt key? Yeah. So if I hold down the alt key and I click on that gradient, it'll show me what that gradient looks like. So I just created this gradient, but that gradient is on the mask layer. So if I hold down the alt key and press it again, it'll hide it. Okay? So what this is saying is that constrain this white to where you see that fade, and then constrain both of those to where, to be inside of that shape. Okay, the way masks work: white means visible, black means invisible. Okay, and so if I hit Control H, I don't know if you can really see. Let me let me turn the opacity all the way up so you can see it more. So you see how that fade is only showing up on this corner here, and then it fades out right there. That's because it's black. Black means invisible, don't show the white. This white means visible, show the white. Okay, so if I change this to red, you'll see that this becomes a red fade. Or if I change it to green, it becomes a green fade. Right? But we want a white fade because it's a light. And we don't want too strong of an effect because then it becomes obvious. Let's make it more subtle. And then. If I really want to finish this image, all I would need to do is add some texture and some shadow, but we'll save that for later. This is good. If you guys can turn this in, this would be great. Okay, so thank you, and that concludes this lesson.